Okay, guys, welcome to Wide Awake News Radio. I'm your host, Charlie McGrath. It is the 27th day of November, Tuesday, and uh, we are uh, live with Bob Tuscan. Uh, we're live on Justin TV. So it, the guys uh, who were uh, wanting us uh, to get back rolling on Justin TV, uh, we, it's, it's one of the first nights where uh, we've had both myself and the guest, at least in this first hour, myself and the guest are going to be uh, broadcasting in uh, live video. So uh, if you want to check that out, you can uh, go to Justin TV and uh, just type in Wide Awake News and that'll take you to our, our site or to our page there. Um, we're also broadcasting, of course, on uh, the one and only Rinse Radio Network. Uh, as well as live on the Oracle Broadcasting Network. Guys, if you want to hear or uh, join the folks in chat, you can go to wideawakenews.com, uh, click on the Wide Awake radio microphone, and that'll take you uh, right into chat, and you can join the folks in there. Um, <clears throat> like I said, Bob Tuscan is joining me live tonight. Uh, a lot of you guys might be expecting uh, Eric Lovely. He could not make it uh, this evening, so uh, you'll have to wait till uh, Thursday, uh, first hour, to uh, get your Eric Lovely fix. Um, he is taking care of some important family business, so uh, Bob Tuscan graciously agreed to uh, come on and uh, join the program. So the, for the first hour tonight, you know, uh, Bob and I are just going to – I talked to Bob a little bit before the program, or message him, I should say, keep it accurate. Um, and we're just going to kind of take it easy and, and uh, have a nice conversation. I mean, he's got a few articles, one of which uh, is uh, near and dear to me because it happened about 90 miles from where I'm at. Uh, it has to do with uh, the – it has to do uh, everything with states' rights. Uh, and are you truly free? I mean, it goes back to this argument. Uh, and you know what? I'll wait till we get Bob on here to talk about this. Um, I, again, uh, Eric Lovely, he will be back here on Thursday night, first hour. Uh, the uh, the guest for no hour number one is going to be, of course, Bob Tuscan. Now, hour number two, we're going to have Sherry Sander Kelly. I'm excited to get her on the program. She's also uh, a radio host, uh, or she hosts a program, I should say. And she is a, uh, uh, an activist that uh, I think is full of energy and is uh, going to be uh, great for this, uh, for this movement and great to, to have on the program. So Bob Tuscan, hour number one, Sherry Sander Kelly, hour number two. If you're in the chat room and you want to call in with a question or a uh, comment for myself or Bob, 877-342-6673 is our free call-in number. Uh, we're pushing about 50 people in the chat now. And I'm in there, so if you have questions or comments in there uh, that you guys want to uh, chat about in hour number one, go ahead and uh, start posting them in there. All right, you know, the, the, news, uh, the news of the day, you know, we've kind of languished around uh, on the markets, if you're a market follower. Uh, one thing I thought was uh, very, very interesting is that we have another IMF structured deal uh, out of Greece that it was supposed to calm the markets down. It was supposed to make, uh, you know, optimism uh, back in uh, vogue and give us a few uh, days of rally, perhaps, until we uh, until we get into the end of this year. Uh, however, that did not happen because I think, uh, you know, again, once again, the, the announcement, the shelf life of hope on these announcements of uh, deals that are cut uh, are getting shorter and shorter and shorter. And in fact, when the IMF uh, sanctioned deal, and this is just, this is it, the IMF sanctioned deal, and nothing to do with the people of Greece, they're not represented whatsoever. It has nothing to do with the people of Europe, they're not represented whatsoever, or the government of Greece. It has everything to do with the IMF, the International Monetary Fund, and the European Central Bank. And to that note, Goldman Sachs is uh, back uh, at it, back in the headline once again, as uh, they managed to uh, uh, take the top spot uh, at the Bank of England. So just one more example of how Goldman Sachs the two big to fail firms truly, truly run this planet. You know, these are the same institutions that blew this economy up in 1929. They're the same institutions that blew this economy up, uh, to, truly took us off the fiscal cliff in 2008. And not only are they still in existence, they are uh, positioning themselves into every possible uh, seat of power to make sure when they uh, unleash financial Armageddon on this world, they're sitting in the place to be able to scoop in and uh, just take over everything for pennies on the dollar. And then most likely, it won't be pennies on the dollar. It'll be covering, you'll be giving your assets over to cover uh, in what will be the sovereign debt uh, crisis of 2013. All right, let's bring Bob Tuscan on. Bob Tuscan, welcome uh, back to Wide Awake News Radio. Great to have you on. Doing a lot of great work over there at the Intel Hub. Um, I appreciate those articles that you sent me earlier today. Uh, and I, I want to get in, to especially that one here uh, or close to me here in Helena, Montana. But uh, tell us how you're doing. 
Charlie, I'm doing fantastic. I made it out alive uh, from Thanksgiving, from the genocide tryptophan day, where you sit on your ass and, and watch the uh, Coliseum with all those uh, oh football my God. players. Yeah. No Jeez. doubt about it. And, and, and then the day after, uh, this is what I barely... And, and I don't Black really African American Friday, right? <laughs> yeah, that's right. And uh, I put out a, a scathing uh, video last night about it. And you know what? I, I've even been... I've even been kind of uh, avoiding the comments on that video uh, because I was pissed. I mean, yeah, you know, I, I I sat back and and absorbed the carnage of Black Friday. You know, the the you, you joke around about the the trip to Pan and, and and Turkey Day and you survived it, but I mean, honestly, in, in my estimation, that you know, that's kind of what that holiday is about. You you give thanks, uh, you, and and we had a pre Thanksgiving program. Where we, you know, there's not a lot to give thanks for, uh, as far as what's happening in our country. There's plenty right. to give thanks for, uh, for what's happening uh, usually with uh, family life and that kind of thing, and, and friends and family. But you know, to sit back and, and gorge yourself on, uh, uh, on food, and, and then uh, you know, be hungover because you ate so much the next day. That's great. But to turn it into this consumerism, uh, this Black Friday event. I mean, all it is is now a pre-Black Friday day. Sure. I have a couple comments on that. Um, last year, I think uh, Chris Duane put out a great video. Uh, and, and you might correct me if I'm wrong in the chat room. Please do. But uh, it was this video that showed people trampling over each other like animals, like uh, cattle, or what the, the elites consider to be goyim. Uh, and this is, in my mind, a very telling sign of the times. That people would, and, and we heard stories again this year of people shooting each other because of some laptop they wanted to get their hands on or some vibrator or something. Who the hell knows what these people want? It's absolutely ridiculous. Now, when I say I got out alive of Thanksgiving this year, Charlie, uh, my family is, well, I, I come from a family of, of sheeple. And yes, they, they, are, they, they are from a Jewish uh, background, and I am very honest about that, but they're secular and they're just as brainwashed about what's going on in Israel as the next guy. I couldn't even bring up the topic of Israel without them getting off of and, and about to have a heart attack, uh, which is always amusing. And I love to push buttons. That's what I do. That's why I confront the Schmendricks like Rudolph Giuliani, Penn and Teller, whoever it may be, or I confront my parents at Thanksgiving dinner. And let me quickly tell you a story. And and I think your listeners can relate to this, and I'm sure you can as well, if you have family that is brainwashed or whatever you want to call it. I don't mean to put them down. And I've become, over the years, more tame, so to speak. But uh, I remember Thanksgiving several years ago now, where 9-11 was uh, really, um, in my eyes, a major wake-up call that I wanted my family to see. I wanted them to get this. And I showed my mother the footage of Building 7's collapse, as I have done with uh, my most recent series, The Building 7 Challenge, which I urge all your listeners to check out. It's, it's a real simple exercise that we have done on a number of different levels, and I've even done it with my own mother. And I showed her the footage. I, I didn't tell her what it was. I just had I said, Mom, watch this building's collapse and, and describe to me what you see here. So she watched the collapse, and it only takes seven seconds. You know, this doesn't take that long. It's not a big, long documentary. And I said, Mom, what's going on? Oh, oh that's a controlled demolition. Oh. And that light bulb went off, and immediately after, her whole world changed when I told her, hey, this is what happened on September 11th. You know, and this isn't the only issue out there. We could talk about the financial September 11th and all, all the other uh, things that follow, you know, all equally important or, you know, on that same level, perhaps. But the bottom line is what happened was after that, no, she didn't become an activist. No, she didn't decide to learn more. She digged a bigger hole to put her head further in the sand, an ostrich that was completely fukushima uh, which is a new term I just coined, fukushima and created uh, and even more, more apathetic of an attitude. So be careful, folks. You can take a horse to the water, but you can't force them to drink. Bottom line. No, no, that that's exactly right. We're we're gonna uh, elaborate on that a little bit more 
with uh, Bob Tuscan of uh, the Intel Hub and more Water Week News Radio in just a few minutes. Hang tight. All right, guys, welcome back to Water Week News Radio. I'm Charlie McGrath, your host. I was watching uh, during the break the Building 7 Collapse uh, Challenge that uh, Bob Tuscan, uh, uh, the video he made, and uh, I dropped it into chat as well. So if you haven't seen it, and I haven't, Bob, I, I'll be honest with you, I haven't seen it, but uh, I love uh, what I've seen so far. Uh, you know, what what I, it's 14 minutes long, so obviously we, you know, I was I was if it was really short, I was going to play it on the air. But uh, I mean, y- you just decided to go out there and uh, and show, you know, from what I saw there, you showed the vid- you showed the collapse, and, and it, it could be any, uh, you know, I don't want to, you know lure people to, to, to tell them what they should think. But if you see this video, it looks like any uh, umpteen history channel special where they show, uh, you know, these companies to go out and blow up buildings. Uh, and rather, I shouldn't say blow up, they implode them and they fall straight down into their own footprint uh, at a free fall speed. Uh, give us, in this segment here, give us the, the, the highlights of what people said to you. I mean, were, were any of them completely blown away when they saw this evidence? Well, you know, we got a number of different responses on that, Charlie. Uh, you know, many of, of the individuals that watched it had that light bulb go go off, and, and they said, hey, yeah, maybe I should look into this. They, they were shocked. Um, I, I don't know if I'm coming through here. Let me go yeah, ahead you and are. turn. Okay, great. My Skype is acting crazy. But, you know, the people that did not get it, uh, were those that you could tell really hadn't given much thought uh, to anything of any importance besides Dancing with the Stars and whatever else they've been brainwashed by. Now, that was just a, a very few uh, amount of the people we, we saw. But uh, the the ones that really shocked me were the ones that said, yeah, that's a controlled demolition, yeah. And then when I told them, when I followed up with them that, well, it's, not only a controlled demolition, it was, well, a building that collapsed in uh, the Trade Center on September 11th, 46, seven, uh, 42 stories, blah, blah, blah. And, and next thing you know, uh, they were completely backtracking like you wouldn't believe. Uh, you know, they were claiming that, uh, oh, no, this, this, what do you mean? Uh, the, what are you, a conspiracy theorist? Yeah. They, they got into that whole headset uh, mindset. And uh, next thing you know, I said, well, d- didn't you just tell me it was a controlled demolition? It was w- one of those gotcha moments right. uh, with these various people that even when they see it with their own eyes and they see the logic and they put two plus two together, which equals four, even when they do that, they still are so brainwashed, cognitive dissonance, that they don't know how to take that information and uh, use it correctly. That, that that's a fact, and you know I, I call it the you know this desire, uh, almost not almost completely unhealthy desire to hang on to this normalcy bias at all cost at all cost, no matter what no matter what you have to believe you know uh, uh, seriously when, when you think of a, a mother or a father that can look at this evidence. And not just this, you know, Building 7 evidence, but the reams and volumes of evidence that uh, that have come out since 9-11, the, the mountain of evidence uh, against the financial 9-11, and, and realize that mothers, fathers can can kind of pigeonhole that back into what the mainstream media, what their, what their politicians have told them uh, that they should compartmentalize any question on those events as conspiracy theories. They put that back there, so they take proof and evidence, put that in their in the back of their brain, and move on. And and that's understandable, right? Because I can understand somebody, you know, a single guy that doesn't want, uh, you know, doesn't want to, app, you know, he wants to go out and party, he wants to go watch his football, basketball game, whatever, and he doesn't want to uh, upset the apple cart, so he's not going to think the direction of his country, why are we fighting these wars? But when I talk to people... You know, Bob, I know you, I know you're a father. I'm a father. When I talk to people who have kids that are military age, right, and, and and they're more than they're more than willing to send, that they're more than willing to to, sure. to to hoist the flag, beat the drums of war, and send their kid off to murder, maim, kill, 
or to be murder maimed and killed or to be killed uh, right yeah in the name of a lie i mean you really have to have an unhealthy desire to uh, propagate uh, this uh, this normalcy bias at all costs even your own, even your own kids lives yeah it's sick it's sick is what it is so you know, so when you tell the story of <laughs> when you tell the story of showing your mom right uh, this and she you said you didn't really elaborate anymore she just dug a deeper hole uh, to you know put the ostrich head into proverbially a uh, proverbial ostrich head into it doesn't surprise me at all yeah i mean that's the attitude and, and it's it's you know people would much rather put their uh, heads back in the sand because if this is true if i was lied to about something like this what else am i being lied to about and and it becomes that trip down the rabbit hole so to speak that people are deathly afraid of you know the whole saying ignorance is bliss well to a certain extent as long as we're fed as long as we got food on our table if it's not in our backyard who the hell cares that's right and that's the attitude that's not my attitude but that's the attitude we see that's so prevalent here in the united states until we see the revolution that's on the horizon and that's when things will get interesting that's what i'm getting ready for that's what i'm getting prepared for and I think that really right there is the more interesting of topics. Uh, you know, we could talk about 9-11, and at the end of the day, people are going to get it, and they're not going to get it. Uh, the Building 7 sh Challenge showed me that there are still people out there that have the wherewithal to get it, but haven't been exposed to it. So we still need to, you know, I'm not dogging that, but everyone I'm talking to practically right now, listening to this, watching this, they know what's going on with it. They know the, the whole rap about the Federal Reserve. They know all these things. I'm not telling right. them anything new. So what do I do? I get solution-oriented. I get prepared. And I get mad as hell. And I'd like to talk more about that maybe when we come back, Charlie. Absolutely, we can. I want to hear what you're doing to prepare for the revolution, as you call it. And I want to get your take on when you think it's coming. Bob, whatever happens, don't, don't, don't let me forget to touch on this article you wrote about this legal marijuana grower who's going to spend 100 freaking years in prison. For, because his state doesn't have the right to be uh, to, to self-governance. We're going to be back with Pop, Bob Tuscan of the Intel Hub. More Wide Awake News Radio. Just a few minutes. Hang tight. Hey guys, welcome back to Wide Awake News Radio. Charlie McGrath, your host. Bob Tuscan is our guest. Uh, you can find a lot of his uh, great writing and work over at theintelhub.com. Uh, he posts there quite often, and uh, those guys do a great job. So I want to make sure we get a plug in for them, theintelhub.com. Uh, uh, if you're not in the chat and you want to join wideawakenews.com, click on the Wide Awake Radio microphone, and that will take you into chat. And again, uh, welcome uh, our third week of broadcasting live on Oracle. Welcome, Oracle listeners. Any call us for Bob, 877-342-6673. And uh, Bob is going to be with us for the remainder of this hour. Coming up uh, in hour number two is Sherry Sander Kelly. All right, let's get back into it, Bob. You were talking about, uh, you know, you can show the people, you can lead a horse to water, uh, you can show them the truth, which which is kind of what we do, right? This is what we do in alternative media. Uh, I, and I've, I've given that advice to people over the last couple of years as well, which is you don't take a sledgehammer to somebody you love and tell them, you know, and, sh and beat them, bludgeon them with the truth, because inevitably uh, they might believe you, but they're going to think you're nuts, number one. Number two, uh, the, you're, you're probably going to drive them further into their shell uh, than if you, uh, you know, show them through love or whatever, show them incrementally uh, that, uh, that the system is completely and totally and utterly rigged and we're heading for disaster. Although my tone has kind of changed, I would say, in the last year, because I do believe uh, time is, uh, you know, the time is uh, imminent, uh, that uh, something uh, devastating is about to occur with our standard of living and our way of life. Uh, but still, you don't, uh, you know, you don't go to somebody you care about and then just try to drown them with truth, because, uh, in, like I said, inevitably you're going to create somebody who wants to do anything and everything to get away from that truth and go back uh, to what they think is normal. So you, you're, uh, you know, I, I think you make a great point. You can, you can lead a horse to water. You can't make him drink. You are uh, taking action and uh, in in your preparations. And let's get into that. What is your, uh, what is your action do you, you've taken over the last couple of years? Well, I appreciate that, Charlie. You know, the idea is to not just sit around here and bitch. You know, we can complain about it. We can only conceptualize and understand so much of it. At the end of the day, aberrant behavior is aberrant behavior. And if it's the, the reptilians or 
the you name it, uh, you know, okay, but what are you going to do about it? How are you going to protect yourself? And, and the first thing uh, on the list for me is to not expose myself to the various toxins that surround us and that we can choose for the most part with the exception of, of course, the geoengineering operations in our skies. We can choose not to consume X. You know, it's it's your choice if you want to eat that genetically modified hamburger with uh, soy that makes you like a a wussy girl. You know, no, I, that was a <laughs> that was <laughs> that was such an unscientific term there. I'm, wussy I'm just, girl, <laughs> a wussy girl. I, that was for uh, for lack of a better term, a wussy yeah. girl. So you know, the point remains. Uh, bottom line, you choose what you put in your body. For now. Until the stores get shut down, and most of the stuff from the stores you don't want anyways, because you don't know where that's coming from. Even if they say it's organic, we saw what Whole Foods did. You know, they said, "Oh, this is organic." Meanwhile, behind the scenes, they're just as guilty for putting out uh, genetically modified veggies on your dinner table as the next guy. So, at the end of the day, I think uh, one of the biggest solutions is to. Get your food, your water situation in order. You know, there's a number of different water filters. I'm not going to try to sell you one. You can figure it out. Be an autodidact. Research stuff for yourself. Now, that being said, I want to bring up something that uh, I've been meaning to talk about, and I'm planning on writing an article, Charlie. There is a a show that I'm sure you know. It's called Doomsday Prepper. Right. I don't own a television. But when I'm down at the family's house, they have a television. I remember it's this is the Sheeple Central, my family's house. And I'm sure a lot of people can relate to this. So I go and the TV's on and I and I'm sitting down, I just trying to unplug, so to speak, and I, I want to see if there actually is anything decent on the Tavistock Institute mind control device. So I I flip through, I look through the, the thing, and I see Doomsday Prepper, and I say, Oh yeah, I know Doomsday Prepper. Let's check it out. This is an all new season of Doomsday Prepper. They've really gone uh, to the extreme to produce the show. And, and what, is the, what is the premise? Okay, each person has their reason for prepping. So you're a uh, fall flag guy. You're a San, uh, New Madrid fall guy. You're a uh, polar shift guy. And you're a Fukushima guy. That's right. So each person gets their reason. They're, they're you know box to be put in and i i'm a fukushima bu- 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 hey bob the- bob hold on a minute because i, yeah. I really i, I really want to hear what you have to say about doomsday prepper because i, I think a lot of our thoughts are going to line up on it turn off your video feed again because you're getting a bit choppy uh so so we'll just we'll just run with the the nice image of bob tusk in there and that'll clean up his uh, audio mm-hmm. feed a little bit if, if you guys didn't hear that He's talking about he doesn't own a television himself, so he goes to the Sheeple Central. And I say that in a loving way, of course, because it's in re- reference to your family. And you are right. looking through the, the channel, <laughs> and uh, you see Doomsday Prepper. And take it from there. They, they're all segmented. You know, this guy okay. is worried about New Madrid Fault. This guy's worried about uh, Kim yeah. Trails, whatever, whatever the case may be. Go ahead. Each uh, participant in the show has their reason for being an extreme prepper. There's one guy that thinks there's a financial collapse. There's one guy who thinks... Population uh, is growing exponentially, therefore we need to prepare for a critical mass. Anyways, the bottom line is the newest breed of preppers are prepping because they think the government is going to kill us. That's what they say. They think, I mean, this is how they framed it. Okay, They framed it that this lady is prepping and she's got guns. I mean, this, it looks crazy. And my mom comes in the room. And she sits down and watches this with me. And I'm thinking about it from her perspective. And I'm watching this and I'm seeing this. And I'm seeing them sh- shape this as a person who is prepping this, you know. And we know that the Department of Homeland Security has announced that preppers are considered to be terrorists. That we know that it is something that they're specifically targeting and labeling as terrorists. And I'm watching this show, this this piece of propaganda on the T- Tavistock Institute device that is very fascinating. I love prepping stuff. But that aside, all the hype, all, all this, you know, this backstory they give to it uh, of, of this person trying to go after the government, it got me thinking. This is what they're, tr- they're shaping the issue up as. They're shaping it up as uh, people who really 
think that the government is out to get us. And they're using that generic, generalized government. The government is not out to get you. They're not out to get you. There's no way every Joe Schmo in the government is a part of this. And many of them are going to follow orders, but many more of them are going to stand on our side. And that's what people have to realize. And no amount of guns that you can prep up on Doomsday Prepper are going to save you from the bombs and the weapons that they have. So I don't know what the hell this person's premise to begin with is. Anyways, that's my rant. Uh, no, and it's a great point. And uh, I want to talk a little bit about it. But you know what I want to do is uh, go to our caller first. Uh, we have uh, Miller from uh, New Jersey on the line. Miller, thanks very much for calling. Did you have a question for Bob Tuscan? Oh, man, you know, I love Bob. I've been listening to Bob since, uh, you know, the, his little lies radio show podcast thing he had going on before he got big My time. My radio um, podcast? You, you, have you been trolling oh, me or have hey. you been listening to me? Oh, bro, I've been listening to you, man. I love your work, dude. I feel like right, you're a thanks. reflection of myself in a lot of ways. Um, you know, everything all the way down to uh, how, you know, you said you had your little awakening with Coast to Coast early in the 90s. You know, the same thing happened to myself. It's just a beautiful thing, man. I wish you the best of luck and everything with your kid. Welcome to fatherhood. It's a beautiful thing. I'm also a father, beautiful daughter I have myself. But uh, I think the revolution is going to go beyond us um, actually fighting um, to a lot of extent. I think in some ways it's going to happen. You know, new zombie and everything, the new zombie they've created. But uh, we all got to stick together, man. Just awaken each other, man. Help Amen. each other out. Lean on each other when we have times of doubt, man. You know, just no love doubt, man. each other. No doubt, man. Miller, thank you very much for the call. I appreciate you uh, chiming in. Uh, we're going to take this uh, last break of the first segment. Be back with Bob Tuscan, and I'm going to talk about this article you wrote because it's a perfect example of where we are. I will give my thoughts on the Doomsday Prepper series real quickly on the backside of this break. Hang tight. We'll be right back. Uh, welcome back to Wide Awake News Radio. Charlie McGrath along with Bob Tuscan, hour number one. And thank you very much, Miller from New Jersey, for that call. I appreciate it uh, once again. Uh, Doomsday Prepper. Um, yeah. You know, here's the deal. I, I actually, two years ago, had... Uh, a rep from Nat Geo kind of reach out to me through the website and uh, I, I declined anything with it because uh, I absolutely, first of all, the, these, some of these folks on here, man, they're, they're, they're all out, man. They're, they're, they're completely, totally, uh, they're planning to live through, you know, the Mayan, uh, you know, whatever, whatever, the worst case scenario. And to be completely honest with you, uh, there's a certain amount that I want to be prepared for, but there's also uh, levels of uh, depravity of humanity or destruction of uh, my environment or, or my planet that I don't want to live through. I, I mean, you know, to be honest with you, if, if we're going to go into the dark ages again, I, I just assume it'd be, it'd be kicked off with uh, the uh, uh, Yellowstone uh, caldera, which I'm 90 miles away from. Uh, get it going, get it going, and I'll, I'll move on to the to the next uh, experience because I, I don't want you know I, I don't want to spend uh, 15 years uh, you know ravaging uh, the carnage of uh, blown out cities and that kind of thing and call that some kind of a life because I just don't think it would be. Uh, so anyway, I, there, there's guys on there who, like I said, they're they're completely totally sold out to this. Uh, I thought I really do think Nat Geo has done. Uh, a fair job uh, of not making these people look like complete and utter buffoons. Um, I, but when you said they compartmentalize, <clears throat> they compartmentalize, uh, you know, what these people are looking at. And I find that to be uh, odd as well. And, and, and here's why th my thought when you were yeah. saying that was, yeah, they, they say this person's preparing for uh, economic collapse. This person's preparing for, you know, earthquakes or floods or, or something like that. Uh, or solar uh, mass coronal ejections, and they, I, I don't, I don't appreciate the way they take individual uh, small slivers, but they don't deliver the big picture. Which you know, they need to have a program that says uh, that that all of these things are possible. Um, the the when they do it the way they 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 present it, they say you know the New Madrid fault. Uh, you know, our experts say there's a one in a billion chance of whatever this kind of thing happening. So they show the prep, they show 
uh, they give them a little rating from whatever prepper association, uh, and then they give you the odds of that event actually occurring. And of course, it's always minimalizing and downplaying it. So at the end of the day, I, I think the whole entire program makes it seem that these are really outliers of society, right? That are that are going to an extreme. They're being hysterical uh, because the odds of their one event they're prepping for are so small and happening. But if you look at at the situation, our current situation in totality, I think it points a different picture. There's a really good chance that uh, some of these preps and some of these preppers are going to have a great uh, opportunity to uh, use these uh, preparatory uh, endeavors they've uh, embarked yeah, on. Yeah, no matter which way you look at it, you know, it's like uh, car insurance. You don't know if you're going to get hit, rear-ended, you don't know what the hell's going to happen, but you get prepared. And, you know, the other aspect to this, and I, I want to move on because we got a lot to get to in our final segment here tonight, and it sh certainly went by fast. Um, geez. Uh, always but does Charlie, you, Bob. Yeah, it always does. But listen, the the crazy thing about this is not only that they compartmentalize these various people, they also at the end of this have a segment, uh, at the end of each person, they have a segment where they discuss the odds, as they call it. Yeah. And they always inevitably say the odds of, uh, well, uh, financial collapse. Well, the odds, economists, and they give this BS line. Oh, economists say that the economy can collapse, and they, and they give some snarky, you know, BS, well, ex, you know, appeal to authority fallacy, and, and that's the end of it. So they've made this to look as if none of these things are a part of reality, that this is just in the movies, so to speak. That this is just Hollywood. This isn't, these people are just crazy. This isn't anything real because at the end of everything, the experts say blank. Anyways, that's my bit about the doomsday no, prep. I'm glad I got to get that out. Yeah, no, but no doubt about it. And, and, and that's exactly the, the position uh, that I took, which is all right, it's an interesting made for TV uh, uh, reality show. Uh, but at the end of it, don't worry, everybody, because the odds of a financial collapse, and you're right, ex, uh, expert economists say we've dodged a bullet, blah, 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 it's very slim, uh, so go back to sleep, and don't worry, you have crazy neighbors, uh, you know, one out of a, a, a hundred thousand are actually doing any prep work, uh, and uh, at the end of the day, they're doing it for nothing, so yeah, you're good, right, all right, here's the deal, we, we, we only have about six minutes left uh, with Bob Tuscan, and I want to get to, you, you sent over a couple great articles, I'm going to dump them all into chat, but this one about uh, uh, legalized medic medicinal marijuana in the state of Montana. This is where I live. Uh, Bob, I'm going to turn it over to you. To give, give, me, uh, the, okay. give me the nuts and bolts of your article because it's fascinating. Sure. Chris Williams is a guy who, under the, the law in uh, the state of Montana, Charlie's home state, uh, was growing medical marijuana. And he has helped a lot of people. Now, recently, uh, the young boy passed away whose father uh, started to give him medical marijuana after he was tortured by the barbaric cancer treatments that are out there today when he could have had the oil from the beginning. And, of course, when you, you put your body through that, you know, especially as a young child, it's, it's very tough. And he unfortunately lost um, his life as a result of not having access to medicinal marijuana. But that aside, we all know the issue. We all know what's at hand here. Here's the deal. They are deliberately, and I'll, I'll, make the, I'll put the big picture together for you here, and I'll take this local case of this gentleman who is facing a possible 92 years, 92 years of jail time, life in prison. And what did he do? Well, he grew a plant. And here's the deal. They are going after marijuana specifically, specifically. And, and they are giving more extreme sentences, prosecutors around the country, and, and this is the state's uh, rights issues aside. This has to do with just how they're treating marijuana itself and how they're treating people, helping people with such a, a powerful thing. If you look at uh, the non-psychoactive components of marijuana hemp, I mean, we could see an overwhelming amount of possibilities that it could offer in our society let alone the psychoactive components. But, you know, we got comments from all over confirming this, that people, you know, here's a gentleman who spent five years in federal prison. Hugh Yon writes on, on our comment uh, on this article that I want everyone to read at the intelhub.com. He says he spent five years in federal prison, and as he was facing the parole board uh, for his marijuana offense, he, he saw a 
what was it, a bank robber go in just before him who came out hysterically crying about the fact that he was given uh, 60 months. Or excuse me, uh, let me get this right. He was scheduled to get uh, uh, 20 months. Five minutes later, the same panel tells him that he has to serve another 60 months for his marijuana offense. (laughs) And this makes you wonder, what's at hand here? Is this really about protecting us from this dangerous pot that's going to make us all have reefer madness? No, that's not what's at hand here. This is... This is a spiritual thing, Charlie, and I know that might seem a bit uh, counterintuitive to those, you know, people out there who see the, the money aspect, the medical aspect, uh, the industrial aspect to it. But this is almost a spiritual issue in many regards. That they would go after a plant that is so healing to me is a sign of the satanic evil scumbags that are really pulling the strings and watching the order takers follow their orders, and uh, as a result, lock good people up like this gentleman from Montana for possible 92 years. Now, we got to get the word out on this. We need to help his situation. There's a number of different links we include in the article uh, that uh, hopefully you can get on and, and support him. Uh, I've already called his uh, local uh, you know, courthouse, and, and I suggest everyone calls as well. Uh, let's see, do I have the number? I'll look that up, and if we can squeeze that in, I'll give it out. Uh, maybe before we end tonight. Is it, is it on that article? Is it linked to that article? No, it's, it's uh, on a side link there. So let me okay. see if I can. Yeah, no problem. And, and uh, while you're looking at that, uh, we, we have a few minutes left. So let me uh, let me touch a little bit on uh, how I believe you're 100% right. I mean, this is the United States of America, 310 million people in this country, 2 million people incarcerated. We have more people, more people, not per capita, more individuals in prison in this country than China and India combined yeah. china and india combined china one point what six billion people uh india uh, uh over a billion people they have less prisoners not again not per capita individuals incarcerated and the vast majority of them are on uh, on uh, drug charges on this war on drugs and understand this this gentleman he didn't break a law he didn't break a law in the no, state of Montana. He was doing illegally to boot, and and that gets into the whole state's rights issues, which and and county rights for that matter, and the local sheriff that is going to stand up for somebody like him and not enforce the federal law. You know, if I was the sheriff of his his county, I would kick the feds out and 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 get him back into my custody. You know, I I would do everything I could in my power, uh, and I think that's what we're going to start to see here as we we see the coming revolution take place. Uh, and I really do believe there's going to be a revolution of sorts. I hope it's uh, a peaceful one. And by the way, I'll be on uh, in the fifth dimension with Karen for the end of the world on the 21st right here on Wide Awake uh, Radio. And uh, I look forward to that uh, with Karen Quintestado. Uh, she mentioned uh, that I should <laughs> tell your listeners about our end of the world, end of the Mayan calendar broadcast. And uh, one last tidbit here. You know, to show you the extreme contrast here, they they have uh, this guy, Jerry Sandusky, who's not the only pedophile, mind you. I believe Washington and the powers that shouldn't be are, are you know, are filled with pedophiles. Look at the conspiracy of the silence, the Franklin file cover up. Look look into all that. These people are sick, I tell you what. But this guy, uh, Jerry Sandusky, gets 45 counts of child sex abuse charges. He gets 30 years. Chris Williams... A guy who grew, again, marijuana legally in his state, under the laws of his state, helping people, caring for people. He's facing 97 years. What the hell is wrong with our world today? Yeah, no doubt about it. And and uh, uh, like you said, legally, people of Montana said that we, self-governing people of Montana, said this is a legal activity. And the feds, the FBI, comes storming in, puts him in cuffs, and now he's facing 100 freaking years in prison. Uh, when literally, you're right, you can rob a bank and get a few months. Uh, you can murder somebody and get 10, 15 years. You, uh, you, you commit no crime in the state of Montana, and he gets 100 years. It's... it's it's absolutely a, a sickening. Bob Tuskin, uh, you can find his great work over at theintelhub.com. Thank you very much for coming on. We'll get you on, on again real soon, man. Anytime, Charlie.
All right, Bob. Thank you very much, guys. Uh, stay tuned. We're going to be back up here in just uh, in about uh, 10 minutes or so with Sherry Sander Kelly. She is in the chat room right now. Uh, I look forward to the first time she's on the program. So hang tight. We'll see you in just a few. Thanks, Bob. I'm going to grab some water, Gary, and I'll see you in a minute. Sounds like see a plan. guys. Have a good night. Hey, Bob, it was hey, a pleasure. You take care, man. Anytime. Bye. Hey, this will be up. Uh, oh, he's gone. I'll send him a link on YouTube. Now my my